Welcome back. You're tuned into your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express right here on SABC3. Now, I recently visited the breathtaking Switzerland to learn a bit more about A. Vogel's Akina Force and to find out about its benefits around colds and flus and it's the complications associated with them. Now, over the next six weeks, we'll be sharing some of my learnings and experiences from this educational trip, which will hopefully give you more insight into these annoying infections that just get us every single winter. But first, to get a better understanding of these illnesses, today we speak with our local family physician, Dr. Neil Richards, who will also help explain some facts about colds and flus. Thank you very much for joining us, doctor. Good to have you. Thanks for having me. Listen, this is a, this is a big topic. We're always talking about colds and flus. We get it every single winter. What's the main difference? Because I must be honest, sometimes when I get a cold and I know that it's only a cold, it feels like I have a full-on flu. I don't know if it's man flu or something, you know, if it's a real deal, sure. <laughs> but what's the difference? Sure, there's definitely a difference. Uh, flu is a more serious infection, which is seasonal in South Africa. Yeah. It normally comes on for about three months of the year, from the end of May until August. Um, more systemic symptoms, body aches, fevers, malaise. You really don't want to do anything with flu as opposed to colds, which is more above the neck, sore throat, headache, and it's a milder infection, which is more short-living okay. and self-limiting. Okay, well, th that's one way. So obviously the physical symptoms, uh, can you, can you, have you actually guys worked out exactly that that's the flu period, and does it stay within those kind of parameters? It varies by a month or two, but tends to be May, it arrives in South Africa and leaves in August, um, September. It seems to be related to the cooler weather. Yeah. Um, People are more likely to pick up flu and colds in the cooler weather because they tend to stay more indoors, yeah. uh, more likely to be contagious because they're closer in proximity to each other. Exactly. Fresh mm. air, people. Fresh and, air. And an interesting fact, the word cold comes from the 16th century um, because they associate the symptoms of a cold with cold weather in Europe. No That's way. where the term cold comes from. The cold. Now, mm. whilst I was in Switzerland, I learned mm. that adults can get a cold two to three times a year. Uh, kids can get it up to eight times a year. I mean, why is that? Why aren't our immune system's kind of kicking in and you kind of have only once and then it's done. Well, a cold is actually the oldest infection known to, to man. It's the most common infection to mankind as well. And the reason is about 200 viruses out there can, that can cause colds. So there's always a new virus that can afflict you. And the cold is not necessarily seasonal like the flu is seasonal. Mm. Um, in children, they will get more readily because they're in close proximity to each other in a yeah. crash or a school environment. That is yeah. the reason. That I would know. Mm. I've got the two kids. <laughs> and it is a real problem. But mm. I think the, the, the bigger worry is those secondary infections, you know, that sure. can spin off from colds and flus, your pneumonias, mm. your, your bronchitis as well. Sure. At, at what stage would you say that we need to go and see a physician like yourself and, and really start thinking about antibiotics? Because mm. personally for me, I don't like to go the antibiotic route. I want to try and, you know, push it out as far as I can. Sure. Well, certain people will be more susceptible to having secondary infections in terms of the elderly, people above 65, or people with lung disease, kidney mm. disease, diabetes. They will have a low threshold to need to present. And children under five who, who get sick with recurrent ear infections. So there will already be a history with those people. They will know that they're more susceptible to secondary infection. But normally things localize. For example, um, if your chest closes, you get short of breath. You get chest pain. You get ear, ear pain, mm. uh, one-sided. If you can't swallow, if things get more severe um, and you're not getting better after a few days, then it's more likely that you yeah. need to see a health professional. All right. And also, just don't go about self-diagnosing, you know, <laughs> because you can get it wrong, I'm sure. Sure. But you can self-treat yourself for a few days initially with colds and flu because it is self-limiting. Yeah. You can use decongestions, pain medication. And the important thing with colds and flu is antibiotics do not kill colds and flu. Only the secondary infections is it appropriate to use antibiotics. Well, there we go. That's an interesting point to note as well. I also need to ask you, I know there's a lot of people like me out there, you know, your exercise is very, very important for you. I try to get it in on a daily, but you can't avoid things like the colds and the flus. Um, and sometimes people kind of continue pressing through, and I myself has been through that as well, mm. which is probably not the smartest thing to do. At what stage do you need to draw the line with regards to having a cold or a flu sure. and, and exercise? When sports medicine uh, talk about the neck rule, if your symptoms are above the neck, be it a sore throat or a headache, you can do mild exercise. So you can still exert mild yourself. Mild exercise. Yes. Don't train for the Comrades Marathon, but you can do uh, keep active. <laughs> if it goes below the neck into the chest, absolutely no exercise for at least a, at least a, a week. Mm. Is there any way that you can avoid getting sick at all? 
is is there a way that you can mm. set yourself up so that you mm. that you are not susceptible to the cold or flu in a particular mm. year? Like if you think about flu shots or something like that. Well, the flu the flu injection has been shown to help. Certainly, certain people should have it. The elderly or children with recurrent infections, and that's given normally in about April in South Africa mm. to cover you through the winter season. But a lot of people ask me the question, why is it you doctors never get sick? <laughs> to which my answer is, I, like I said, we wash our hands all the time. Hand washing has really been shown to be one of the most effective really? ways to prevent infections. Recurrent right. hand washing all the time. Yeah. And you think it's something so simple as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Neil. Really appreciate Pleasure. your insights. Um, very interesting indeed. But another interesting thing that I learned uh, whilst I was over in the stunning Switzerland is that when it comes to taking something to help prevent colds and flus, Avogel's Echinophores is one of the world's most effective natural ways to do this. There's over 20 years of scientific and clinical research that has gone into Echinophores and it has produced some fascinating results to say the least. Now over the next few weeks I'll definitely be sharing some of this information with you plus of course showing you some of the more beautiful sights of Switzerland as we travel around not only in Zurich but also around in the countryside. I'm looking forward to sharing with you. A. Vogel's Echinophores is the world's strongest herbal product that's clinically proven to prevent and treat colds, flu and their complications.